Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, we're gonna drag a 59 Plymouth Suburban home. Yeah, that's right. Plymouth made Suburbans. GM did it first, still does it, but Plymouth made them for a while. This year's a 59 model. Let's load her up, see if we can't get it running. So we picked this thing up at a Girard auction. It's a 59 Plymouth Suburban four-door wagon, parts only, no title. It's got a flathead six, three-speed with overdrive. Let's check this thing out. Last run in, titled in, 1968. So what's that? 52 years ago. Got a nice coat hanger antenna. Apparently that mirror got ripped off. Look at these sweet fridge door handles. Look at that seat. The smell isn't even absolutely terrible. We'll find out more on that door later, but you can see the seats do not match. That's the original interior. This seat has been replaced. There's the overdrive. That's actually anti-overdrive. But look at those sweet push buttons for the heater controls. Plymouth AM radio, three pedals, that's right. Three on the column, no millennial will be able to drive this thing. It's got the rear view mirror on the dash. How cool is that? Oh yeah, that switch was for the light bar. Church key. Oh, it doesn't say hams on it. Might need that later. Not many critters in there. Owner's identification. March 13th, 1959. Sold by Beekler Motors in Watertown, South Dakota. How cool is that? Look at the telephone number. TU6584. How do you get a letter and a phone number? Ed J. Sh Shelsta. He's probably no longer with us. Yeah, got a lot of cool trim. Headliner sagging in a couple spots. This is a... Six passenger model, doesn't have the third seat back there. It's got them swanky fins on the side. Oh, that's right, she's custom. Rocker on this side's got a little bit of rust. Other side's real good though. Missing a couple of pieces of trim. Might have a contact for that. Missing one hubcap, but it was in the car when I bought it. Oh, still there. Got the stainless deflectors on the back. Manual roll up rear window. Factory fuel fillers missing. Got a little hooey there. A little bit of rust in the bumper. This taillight's a little janked up. I guess they're wagon only according to the Cooperstown Mopar gurus. This trim needs a little loving. This quarter has got a little bit of rust bubbling in the bottom but the floors seem really solid when I climbed around in it this quarter is way good top nobody's jumped on it there's the major issue I see we need to find a matching door so if anybody's got a orangish pinkish door for a 59 Plymouth wagon hit me up Tires are flat, just on the bottom side we're good there. That's the hubcap that's missing, but it's inside. Gonna need this trim for this door, or we just need the right door with a good window. I think that's the only glass that's bad. Oh, well, she needs a windshield. Both the wipers are there. Look at this, stupid Mopar. No studs for the wheels, they got bolts. See that L on there? They're left-hand thread. How dumb is that? Like they're gonna spin out? Cause guess what? They're right on the right side, left on the left side. Don't snap those off when you're taking them off. We got the mirror on this side. A little dent there. Missing a little bit of the Plymouth emblem. Let's check out what's under the hood. Ooh, 24 karat. She's got your standard run of the mill, flat six. Last year for it, 1959. Radiator hose is blown out, but it turns. Well, I had two hands. I tried it earlier before I bought it. 
she turns over. Radiators there. Use Mopar rust resistor antifreeze only. A little bit of rod under the battery box. Usual fruit jar master cylinder. Single reservoir. No power steering, no power brakes. She's pretty plain Jane other than the overdrive. Torsion bar suspension, so we can slam right on the ground even more than it already is. Did that just rust off? Oh no, somebody had her loose. Let's leave that there. It'll ride. So I think we just put a battery in it. Give her a little shot of the Cosby sauce. This thing's going to take right off. Oh, look at that neat head bolt that's got the spring built into it for the throttle linkage. Yeah, not seized up at all. Canister type oil filter. That's a cute little guy. So yeah, get her turning over, clean up the points. We'll be whipping donuts in no time. Probably gonna wanna put some tires on it. We might even check the brakes. Coolant? We're just gonna pretend like it does. Oil. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. She's pretty much road ready. All right, let's load her up, get her home, put some tires on it, do burnouts. Just got her home from the auction. It's been sitting since 1968, so by my miscalculations, that's 52 years. So, should be easy. Carburetor free. Uh, Kind of, but not really. Gonna need a battery. We got two battery cables. Do we have any battery cables? So there's our ground. There's our solenoid for power. Since it's got that fancy solenoid, we don't need any keys. Ignition system looks complete. Now it is. Turns over, I already checked that. A lot of weeds. Cooling system's not gonna hold fluid. It's got oil in it. I think. Flathead six, three speed. Should be easy. Starter's easy to work on if we got some electrical connection issues. Cause I don't have a spare starter. Let's grab a battery and I guess try to clean up some cables. They might come to life. Took our Battery cable cleaner 8000 here. And posts, does it all. You should get yourself one of these. Real professionals got them. And so do I. But, as suspected, the positive cable, a little bit too far gone. Negative cleaned up all right though. So, found this laying in my stash. Oh boy, get on there. Here's how I like to widen those out when they're not the right size. Just get in there with your half inch wrench. Just like that. Well, I'm gonna go grab my starter button. And if this battery's any good, and if that starter's any good, and that solenoid's any good, and all the connections in between are any good, this thing might just turn over. Got our handy dandy push button starter majigger thing here. Hooked her up to the starter solenoid post right there. This one's only got one. Fords like to have two and you gotta figure out which one to hook up to. So good job Mopar. Let's see what happens. <laughs> starter works, connections are all good. No funny noises like a rod knocking around. I guess I didn't even look for any holes in the side of the block. So those are usually the steps I usually take to get these running are make sure it turns over by hand, then make sure it turns over with a starter and battery and whatnot, because if it doesn't turn over with a battery, you're not gonna start it by hand. And then we'll move on to the ignition, and last is fuel. Got my coil wire here. Gonna hook this up to the positive side of the coil which is, where is the wire harness at? 
Looks like this one goes into the wire harness, and then this side's going down to the distributor. Yep. Positive side gets the coil wire. Negative side goes to the distributor. Hook it up to our battery. Now let's see if we got any spark. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this with one hand. No way are those points going to be working. Doesn't look like we got anything. We'll try moving her a little bit closer to there. Not much of a gap there. Let's see what happens. All right. Unhook that so we don't blow our coil up. Hey, we don't even need any tools to get the distributor cap off. Well, I could have done it with my hand, but we don't need a screwdriver like some guys like to have. Let's just push this wire over into the fan so that it gets hooked. That would be great. Oh, come here, dipstick. Hold that off to the side. There you go. Oh yeah, she's a little dirty in there, unless I did that. I'm gonna go grab some emery cloth to clean those points up with. Maybe some compressed air and blow that out. See if that helps. So I got some emery cloth. Just take a short piece, fold it in half. Slider right in there, in between the points, contacts. Try to clean them up. Here's what the old timers use. It's a points file. This one was rusty and I think in the Ford flathead truck. She's pretty chewy. I don't think there's much more filage that it's gonna be doing. And then I'll usually go and flick the points a couple times with a screwdriver. There you can see them arcing, but it's not arcing where it's supposed to. There, it's arcing where it should. See that spark between the contacts there? Now let's see if we got spark between the contacts and we turn it over. I can hear it. Or maybe it's this that I hear. Let's see if we got spark coming from the coil. Oh yeah. Good consistent hot spark. So, Put our rotor back on. Where's our distributor cap? I suppose we should look at the contacts in there and see how chewy they are. Yeah, let's blow that out and then maybe scratch the corrosion off of those contact points with a screwdriver. Then it'll be good. Hey, look at this fender cover we put on there to protect that nice paint job. We're professional around here. That's right, it's an old t-shirt. Tech tip of the day. Clean up the contacts on our distributor cap. Next would be the plugs and plug wires, but I'm sure those are completely fine. Looks real good. Rubber's nice and flexible, so that's pretty much all they are, rubber. Electricity goes through it, magic. Look at how neat this is. Number one wire's got a red boot on it, so you know where that goes. I don't think that happened by accident. These are fancy. Those are the good wires, the real good ones. So next is fuel. Oh yeah, speaking of rubber, look at this. Usually I like to cut the fuel line so that I don't pull up any of that old fuel, but I don't think there's any 52 year old fuel in there. Listen to that. That's the rubber fuel hose. It's petrified. I've never seen thing. Oh, get some. Come on. Jeez. That's a good hose. Usually I like to cut those off so it's not pulling that old fuel and gum up the carburetor or the fuel pump. Sometimes that old fuel will get actually into the valve guides and cause issues there. Sticky lifters and whatnot. So I always cut that fuel line. We're not gonna this time though. We got the sriracha sauce. Oh hey, it's got a, ch oh my goodness, is that an electric choke? 
Oh no, that's for the overdrive kick down. Give her a little fuel. Hook up our ignition wire. First start in 52 years, try number three. Kinda sounds like it's trying. I think she just needs some more fuel. Come on, first start. It's not sucking on my hand very hard. I wonder if we got some stuck valves. Uh, do we still have spark? Good spark there. I think we gotta pull the spark plugs out. Before we do that, let's blow all the mouse poop and rust and cat hair out from the plug holes. Right into the carburetor. Those plugs are fine. What are they, Varcons? Oh yeah, Varcons. Those are good ones. Hey you, get back to work. Got all the spark plugs out. They look good. They were a bugger. Even had to spray a little zep them down there. Spinning it over. I don't really see a lot coming out of there. Let's give it the old compression test. Not good. Also not good. Hey, we got one. Nothing. 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 One out of six. Is not good. Guess we're gonna pull the head off. See what we got going on in there. Maybe it's just some stuck valves and we can goop the head back on, get them loose. Ah, the disappointment that is Mopar continues. comes out. Who'd have thought? Both those valves are moving. That cylinder we know is good. So I'm guessing the way that cylinder didn't have any compression. Pistons don't have any holes in them. Not much of a ridge in the cylinder walls. You should never have both the intake and the exhaust open at one time so Clearly one of those is stuck, and I'm guessing these two are stuck as well, and this one. Oh, I should do something about that oil thing. So yeah, one, two, three, four stuck valves. These are both working now for some reason. Maybe taking that head off jarred something loose. Let's give him a little zap on. Wait. Which cylinder was good? Ah, not gonna hurt to put a little in there. Eh, 
then you grab your then you grab your special valve loosening tool maybe that's on the lifter or the camshaft whatever these things got maybe that one is too oh my Well, that's going to end the day here at Mortsky Repair because I'm not going to put valves in this thing. So there you have it. How to not get a flathead 6 Mopar engine running in a 1959 Plymouth Suburban Custom. Stuck valves we can deal with, but broken off valves we can't deal with because I don't have any flathead six Mopar parts around. So another Mortsky flathead fail. One of these days we're going to get a flathead to run. I promise. I'll keep trying. Appreciate you watching. Hope you liked the video. If you did, click the thumbs up button. It really helps. And uh, check out my other videos. I did get a few things to run. Oh, for two on flatheads. Remember, doesn't matter how you get it done. As long as you're having fun. I don't know that we got anything done, nor did we have any fun. Did you have any fun? Yeah. <laughs>